Hello, Libra friends, it's that time again where I answer emails oh so quickly. Wrap it up in about 20 minutes. I'll drink some water and take a second. <sighs> Welcome to the show. It's me, Leaps. We're going to talk. Hashtag Libra friends. Got emails. Going to read them to you. Answer them as well for you. Here we go. Not doing this the whole show. Okay. <clears throat> hey, Matt. It's Roxy again. Another question for you. I want to lose weight. I'm starting to feel like my anxiety and self-esteem issues have a lot to do with my size. Uh, sometimes I leave the house feeling okay about myself, but then as the day goes on, I feel more self-conscious and just downright ugly. I want this to not be such a problem anymore. I want to put myself on an easy diet, though a lot have said there is no such thing. Do you have any recommendations for losing weight or any rules I should follow during the process? Any help would be appreciated. Um, hey, Roxy. A uh, few things. One, you're beautiful, and don't let anyone take that away from you, even you. Um, it, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to lose weight. I've been doing that uh, recently because when I joined SourceFed, the stress of the job and also negative comments uh, caused me to put on 15 pounds and then everyone talked about it and it led to some uh, good videos like the one about fat shaming um, but in any case I put a lot of pressure on myself to lose weight and I was driving myself nuts with diets the easiest one that I found but it was easy for me and it's not necessarily easy for everybody um, was I started doing the uh, ketosis diet. Uh, you could go to r slash keto, uh, K-E-T-O. Um, there's like a big community over there. And uh, if you check out my source fed video about uh, eating bacon causes you to lose weight, it's basically the same thing where uh, it's a high fat, like no carb, no sugar diet. Um, and what I found when I was doing it was uh, even though it was such a strange impulse to like go for the fattiest foods and make foods even fattier uh foods that i'm not supposed to have as long as there was no sugar and no bread even though that felt strange i would i was actually eating less and uh my energy level was just constant all the time and i was just burning fat instead of uh instead of carbohydrates all the time and it was pretty remarkable. And I, I lost, I lost my, my, my source fed weight. I'm like back down to like 175, which is where I was when I started, which is huge. And it, it took about a month. Now, obviously, men lose weight faster than women. It's just it's a horrible part of life. Um, but that diet really worked for me because it was, it was easier for me to give up the carby stuff because I was still eating things that felt like sinful treats. Like I had bacon for breakfast every day. Just all, just a bunch of bacon, like eight to 10 strips of bacon for breakfast. And then I, the fat would keep me so satiated. I would be so full that, um, you know, I'd go and I'd get like a high fat salad for lunch. You know, um, like you should avoid carbs, but Fiber carbs are okay, so I would get like a spinach salad with um with like hard boiled egg and chicken and uh celery and cucumber and uh shaved almonds and avocado with like a like a fat based dressing um like a Caesar dressing or a buttermilk ranch dressing or something like that um though I would check the nutrition facts and make sure that it's it's low to no sugar. And uh, I'd eat maybe a quarter of that salad and put the rest away and then have that for dinner. And that would be, that would be my day. It felt really good. Um, and it was easy because uh, even though it was difficult when I ate out, I was still eating all the things that on an ordinary diet I would be missing. Um, and the few remaining things I didn't miss as much. That's, that was really helpful for me. Um, I mean, I've always found it's easiest to lose weight when you're doing it with someone um, so you can hold each other accountable and so that you have a support system for when things get hard. Um, the first time I lost a bunch of weight, myself and my friend Casey were both dieting at the same time and uh, we did like a series of vlogs 
together. Um, or she was supposed to vlog, but never did. But I, I vlogged and that helped me get through it. Uh, my fitness pal, very helpful because you can track your intake, not just of carbohydrates, but sodium, trace minerals, protein, fat, all that stuff. And it sets up solid uh, goals for you to hit, not just a calorie count, but the percentages, a ratio of how much fat you should be eating, how much carbohydrates you should be eating, how much protein you should be eating uh, to maintain a healthy lifestyle. So even just keeping, putting in everything I ate, even when I broke my diet, and keeping myself accountable was very, very helpful, but you gotta, you gotta do it, you gotta do it consistently for like a week or two for it to really lock in and for it to become a part of what you do. That's really helpful. Um, when exercising, uh, eating a ton of protein afterwards um, is very helpful and will help you uh, recover a lot faster. When so like muscles become t tighter and stronger and bigger, not when you're working out, but during the recovery phase. So you don't want to use them. You want to try to take it easy until you feel better again. Um, you should have a lot of protein, and you should have something called branch chain amino acids (BCAAs). You can get them in pill form. They're also uh, part of whey protein powder. Um, they're found in milk. These uh, amino acids help your muscles recover faster. You won't feel as shitty after a workout, uh, and you'll recover faster. Good news. What else? I like to prescribe to uh, a three-day rule when it comes to cravings. Cravings are fucking normal, and they're inevitable, and uh, when you are limiting your, your diet, you're always gonna have them. Now, for me, I say, if I have a craving for something for three full days, three, count them, like uh, on a Tuesday, I think about fried chicken. And I want that fried chicken so bad. Most cravings only last about 20 to 30 minutes. So I ride that craving and I go get a salad instead. Now say, Wednesday comes and I'm still thinking about that same fried chicken. Whew. I sit on that craving and I ride it out and I don't get that fried chicken. But if I'm still thinking about and craving fried chicken, if I've been thinking about it nonstop for three days, then I'll go get a two piece and leave it at that. I don't need to overindulge. I don't need three or four pieces. I don't need half of a fried chicken. If I go and just get some of it, I have satiated the craving and I haven't had too much of it. And I also haven't thrown my diet away. I'm willing to accept that sometimes you just want the thing you want. And if you just have it in moderation, when you've earned it, when you've gone days without thinking about it, then I think it's okay. I also think that you should always have a cheat meal once a week. It should be a regular time that is always scheduled, not moving so that you don't forget about it or you don't waffle. Like for me, I love breakfast. I love it, and I don't wanna to have to limit what I get for breakfast. So Sunday morning is my cheat meal. If I am limiting my diet in other ways, if I am trying to stay healthy, Sunday morning I know I can have whatever I want, no guilt. And it, sometimes that just knowing that there is going to be a time in a few days where I can have whatever I want gets me through it. Um, also, don't, ob don't obsessively weigh yourself. I fall into this trap all the time uh, my dad used to tell me, uh, weigh yourself in the morning and weigh yourself at night. And if you're way heavier at night than you did in the morning, you did something wrong. Don't do that. That will fuck up your head. It's wrong. Don't overly weigh yourself. Maybe weigh yourself like once, twice a week. Let yourself, just, just so you know what's going on. But also, once you've reached like a healthy weight, a weight that you're happy with, stop weighing yourself. Just Know that you're happy and healthy and that you feel good and that you look good. Try to know it internally and don't rely on the scale because you can just get caught in this trap of weight obsession. And as I said earlier, you're beautiful and you don't have to lose a pound anyway. So if you want to get healthier, if you're trying to eat healthier, limit your carb and your sugar intake. Cutting out bread, huge. If you can cut out bread and grain, even huger. Bread, grain, sugar, boom, you are in such good shape. Carbs are the reason why we gain so much weight.
letting go of the breads and the sugars really helps. Um, the only, I try to only consume natural sugars. Uh, so really just only fruit and like some vegetables like corn, which are very sugary. Um, that's where I get my sugar from. I will not drink anything with sugar in it. I try not to cook with anything with sugar in it. Sugar is really bad. It is the thing that we overindulge in so, so much. So don't be afraid of fat. Fat is fine. Processed foods, bad. Like if, if I were to come up with three simple things, like without saying that you're on a diet, but three simple things that uh, can help you get, I think, start making positive choices, no fast food. No fast food, no processed snack food. Those are the big two. And then the third one is have a cheat meal. That's, that to me is the big three. No processed food, no processed snack food, have a cheat meal. That way, you know that you're not eating anything that you don't know is there. The more you can cook, the more you know exactly what you're putting in your body, the better you will feel. Eating cleaner is a great way to feel better and to lose weight. Um, snack food, crazy amounts of little things that are bad for you, that aren't necessarily food, that are preservatives. Look at the ingredients of everything you're putting in your body. If you really want some kind of carbon mal, mal concentrate calcium what's it got to tit in your body no freaking subway had that stuff with the, the yoga mat stuff in their bread until we had to someone had to look into it and find out about it like chill try not to do the bread either that'd help all right i talked way too long about that we got other emails i hope i answered your question and, okay, this email, this email is from a Libra friend. Uh, I've been homeschooled much of my life and I've enjoyed it because of the freedom it has allowed me in choosing courses and languages and activities. Uh, and to, to dispel any misconceptions, no, my parents don't teach me. Most of my classes are online or at local colleges. However, I never really fit into the homeschool community. Most of my activities are with public schoolers. No, I don't really see them outside of those activities. Um, as such, I don't have friends that I'm really close with. I see some every now and then, but not daily or even weekly. Now to the question. I want to get into comedy. Uh, when I'm comfortable around people, I like to make them laugh, and I want to try that out on stage. But I'm introverted, and it usually takes me a while to open up. I'm worried that my stage persona won't be my funniest self. I'm also worried that I don't have enough material and don't know what's funny as I don't have friends to bounce th things off of that often. I'm not really worried about being on stage, though, as I participate in debate a lot. I'm just worried about being funny on stage. Do you have any advice for finding what's funny and starting with stand-up? Also, I want to try out YouTube to get out comedy videos and see what people think of them. How ultimately, however, I know I want to follow a career in business or government, both of which require a professional image. I feel like a lot of my comedy, at least to start, would be based on my social awkwardness, trying new experiences outside of my introvertedness, and my, never, my lack of ever having a girlfriend, etc. I'm worried, however, that this could make me peer, appear negative in the eyes of potential employers. Do you have any advice on this situation? Should I just stick to stand up and avoid YouTube? Um... Okay, few things, Libra friend. I'm gonna start with the first part of the question, I'll get into the second. Um, good news, most comedians are introverts who are terrified of social interaction. That's why we do stand up in the first place, because it's the only place that we feel comfortable and in control, is when everyone is watching us and we're the only one who's allowed to speak, because fucking social stuff is scary. Um, you don't need to worry about finding your voice when you just start out. It will take you five years, potentially, to figure that out. Think about Louis C.K., right? Louis C.K., his first big breakout uh, hour special, where his current style of comedy first appeared, I believe was, it was either Shameless or Chewed Up, and it was, I think, 2001 when that came out. He had been doing stand-up comedy since the mid-80s. It took him nearly, it took him like 15 years, 15 plus years to figure out who he was on stage. Before that, he was doing 
this kind of like absurdist poetry where he would talk, like his most famous joke was about like a peach. I got a peach. It's like, it's not, it, not that there's anything wrong with that kind of humor, but it's not who he most authentically and effectively was. And it took him over a decade and a half to figure it out. So don't put so much pressure on yourself. You might not be funny at first. You might suck. You probably will. It's okay. You will get a few laughs and you will feel like a fucking king because you got laughs at all. My first time doing stand-up, I was supposed to do five minutes. I wound up talking for 15. I didn't even realize it. And I got like a handful of laughs and I felt like a god. And then the next day, I went to a comedy club to an open mic and I got up there and nobody laughed and I felt worse than I've ever felt in my entire life. It took me two months to get back on stage, but when I did, I got even more laughs. And then I started working on it. I wasn't being my authentic self. I was just talking about whatever I thought people would find funny, which is kind of what you're asking me about here. And I would get some laughs, but it wasn't me they were laughing at. They were laughing at these ideas and the jokes, and that's fine. But um, I didn't really start to come into my own as a comedian until I started talking about myself and talking about the things that I found funny about me and how I felt about the world. The more you can put yourself into your humor, the closer you will be to you. And you are your funniest self. You personally, you the person, not a shade of you, not a version of you, not the comedian version of you. You are your funniest self. And the more you can strip the desire to make people laugh away from who you are and just speak your truth, the funnier you will be. That's going to feel real weird and you're not going to know how to do it for a while. Just keep plugging. Just keep writing and keep getting on stage. You don't need other people to bounce stuff off of. That's what audiences are for. Go to open mics. Go to low pressure open mics. And even if you bomb and you feel like shit, Tape yourself so that you can hear where things are going right and where things are going wrong. Review your jokes. What was it about that performance that made that, made that joke not work because you know the idea is funny? Rewrite it or perform it differently. That's my best advice when it comes to stand-up is, um, is just try not to get bogged down in whether or not you're any good. You won't know for a long time. Just keep going. Just keep going. I did stand up for five years, five. And uh, towards the end, I really started to feel like I was getting on a groove, but I still wasn't performing enough to really make a go of it. Don't do it because you're trying to get figure out what makes other people laugh. Do comedy because you want to talk about the things that make you laugh, what you find funny. That is the best and only way to be a comedian is to talk about what you find funny and be you. Now, in regards to YouTube and knowing that you wanna eventually be a lawyer or someone in the government in an official capacity, um, you never actually have to appear in any of your videos. Have you thought about that? You could film them all from your point of view. Uh, they could be animated. They could involve other people, whatever. You never actually even have to be in your videos. If you just want to use video as a way, as a medium to talk about the things that you find funny, then uh, that would be the best way because even if you delete stuff off the internet, it still exists somewhere. On some server, somewhere, someone could find it. That's just a thing. Taking precautions, um, setting up an account that is not your name, not appearing in the videos. Um, those are two big ones. But, you know, it's up to you. It's really, a, it's really your decision. If you want to be in your videos, if you want to make your art, go make your art, and then you'll fucking deal with it later. You can delete it. And unless someone's really trying to shame you, which, like, would only happen if you were really, if you were, like, running for, like, a major office, that's the only time where someone could really use YouTube comedy against you. I think you're okay. So don't worry that much, all right? Next email. Okay, um, this is from a Libra friend. 
Uh, my question for you is, what are your thoughts on dating coworkers? I work in a place where I see many couples working together, but I often think about what would happen if they broke up. I myself feel that I may be in a situation where I can date someone I've been working with for a few years now, but I fear what would happen if it didn't work out. We're great friends, growing closer every day. I wouldn't want to lose this. Is it perhaps best to avoid the dating game with this person? I understand if you have more important questions, but any advice is appreciated. I don't have more important questions. I just have questions. They're all important. Let me answer your, e your email very simply. Um, I think you already know that you shouldn't date her. I think that's you're looking for either permission to date her or confirmation that you shouldn't. Um, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I do think, as a rule, dating coworkers is unnecessarily messy because, uh, yeah, you will have to see that person every day. And uh, if you fuck up, well, you're just going to have to deal with that every day. That sucks. Um, yeah, I used to have like a major, massive crush on my best friend who I also worked with. I'm not going to get into that whole story here, but um, that was my dilemma. I was you. I was debating whether or not to ask. Sometimes in life, you run out of space on your phone and it stops recording and you don't realize that it stopped recording and you answer a whole email and, uh, and, and, then, and then you have to do it again, which is fun. That's what's going to happen right now. Um, I, don't, I don't know how far I got in reading his email, but this Libra friend wants to know if he should date someone that he works with. Uh, and Libra friend, here's, here's what I'll say to that. Um, messy at best. I don't want to tell you not to ask her out because what if you guys are really great together? Um, but maybe you should wait until you're not working together to do so. If you are going to go ahead and, and date each other while working together, don't tell anyone that you work with for like a few months. Know that you guys work as a couple before coming out as a couple to your work, your workplace, your workmates. Because if things don't work out, you don't want to make a big hubbub at work and then have to go back on it like a couple weeks later. Like, wait a couple of months, two to three months. Make sure that your relationship works before letting your friends in on it. Um, because if it doesn't and no one knows about it, you can quietly agree this wasn't a good idea. We should go back to being friends and, uh, and no one will ever be the wiser, smarter that way. Um, as a rule, I would say dating coworkers is just like, it's a mess that you don't need. There are people everywhere. Um, I've had crushes on coworkers before. It's hell, because you see them every day and you want to be with them more than anything. Um, yeah, I, I'm not gonna tell you not to do it. I am telling you it's not smart. But be smart about it if you're gonna do it. Don't tell anybody. Try to keep it light at first. Don't get really intense with it take things slowly because if either and take things slowly and and fucking talk to each other communicate so well tell each other all the things that you are feeling try not to be afraid of sharing that with another person whether it's good or bad so you can make informed decisions so that you're not hurting each other so that you're both on the same page at all times because you not only have a friendship that's in the balance, but also the quality of your time at work, which could start to really suck if you guys, you know, one of you treats each other poorly and then it's just, it's just shit. So don't do that. All right, folks, that's gonna be the show for me today. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed it. Google Hangout Thursday night shows all week. Love ya. See you soon.